Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Entitled People. I hope you're all doing awesome and let's get right into it. Entitled Neighbor Wants Copy of Grandma's Will When my grandmother was diagnosed with cancer, she opted for no treatment. She had watched her husband go through chemo, radiation, and surgery, and he was miserable the whole time. She didn't want that for herself. Her family supported her. Over the next year, she gifted items to family and friends told us to write our names on the things we want, take what we wanted, etc. There were conditions. No, you can't have that. It's a family heirloom meant to go to aunt and her kids, or to dad and his kids. We all knew what those items were and who they were going to, so that was easily settled after she died. The house was inherited by my father, who very suddenly and unexpectedly passed away, two weeks later. I inherited the house at that point. The next door neighbor, we'll call him Todd, came over several times, upset that he and his kids, a 21-year-old female and a 19-year-old male, weren't invited to grandma's funeral. There wasn't one, we were all too busy reeling from my father's death. Weren't presented with the copy of the will, it only included family members. And he knew grandma loved his kids like her own. She didn't, she complained about them coming over all the time, stealing her water to fill their pool, and she had to tell them to stop calling her grandma. He wanted to know if I would allow his kids to go through the house to see if there was anything they'd like to take to remember her by. Okay, first dude, my grandma died four weeks ago. And dude, my dad died two weeks ago. I thought he was awfully rude, but I offered to let them go through the boxes I had packed that I was planning to donate, and he was offended. I mean mortified. He said his daughter and son had their hearts set on some items that were family heirlooms, and I literally laughed at him. I explained they were family heirlooms and would be staying with me, and two of them had already gone home with my brother. He said, My kids were her family and she would have gifted those to them. They should have been included along with everyone else when everything was divided up. Keep in mind that none of us knew this guy or his kids other than the neighbors next door. They were never at any family gatherings that were held at her house, and the only time I ever heard her talk about them was when she was complaining about them especially when she caught them using both her hoses to fill up their pool, and then came over complaining because she had put locks on the outdoor faucets. Luckily, Todd's house was in foreclosure, and he moved away about a year later. Todd brought up the subject three times in the year he lived next door, all within about two weeks. This particular incident was the end of it. The first two times were eyebrow-raising hints, where I walked away not really sure if I was interpreting his words correctly. This time he was brazenly clear, and when I laughed and told him he couldn't have the items he listed, he never brought it up again. That's actually incredibly scummy. Trying to lie about your supposed relationship with someone that passed away, just to try to get stuff. Because it's clear they only wanted the good stuff or something of value, not just a little memento to remember her by. Otherwise, they would have accepted the offer to take something out of the box that they were donating. I just wonder what kind of person would see that someone passed away that they're not really close to and actually think to themselves, hmm, you know what, I wonder if I can get something out of this. I finally told my father's infantilizing friend that I hate him. Years ago, my dad met Harold through mutual friends, and they hit it off. I was 18 and in college when I met him, and we never had a close relationship. However, he always seemed to think of himself as a family friend, and was extremely infantilizing and condescending towards me. Every time I saw him, I'd try to tell myself it wasn't that bad, only for him to prove me wrong less than a minute later. Harold would always disrespect my boundaries, saying things like, you're not 19, you're a baby, while I was talking to other people, and patronize me, my education, or my hobbies whenever he had the chance. He always noticed that annoyed me to which he'd playfully ask if I hated him. I always said no, but only for my father's sake. The final straw came the day Harold interrupted a barbecue to say, I really like you, even though you're an impolite brat. I was 20 years old. I had been quiet all day working on a paper during the barbecue, but replied patiently and politely whenever anyone addressed me. And even if that hadn't been the case, I knew he didn't have the right to talk to me like that. After that, I started making an effort to avoid any events I knew he'd be attending. Yesterday was my father's girlfriend's birthday. They threw a small lunch party at my dad's apartment. I went there with my fiancé and our six-month-old son. Harold was there. I hadn't seen him in months, but he still talked to me as if I was a dumb child. Never mind that I'm engaged, a mother, and 26 years old. 
I spent the whole party ignoring his helpful advice about me being too young to get married or be a mom. It helped that most of the other guests seemed to disagree with him. My baby spent most of the afternoon sleeping. There's a bassinet in my old room. He woke up hungry, so I went to breastfeed him and excused myself from the party for a while. I got back to jokes and comments, all from Harold, about how I was probably struggling if my son was managing to leech me away for so long. He went on to interrupt a conversation I was having with another of my dad's friends to question pretty much everything about my parenting. He doesn't even have custody of his daughter, by the way, and to make more comments about my age. I decided I couldn't take it anymore after he asked if I'd thought about giving my baby up for adoption. I got my son and told my fiancé we were leaving. We said goodbye to everyone except Harold. When we got to the door, Harold came to ask us why we were leaving. I tried to make up an excuse, but he kept trying to make us stay. After a small back and forth, he jokingly asked if I hated him. And this time I said, Yes, I do. Can we go now? He didn't say anything and we left. On the way home, my fiancé said he was proud of me. My father called this morning to say the opposite, and we had a small fight but ultimately decided to drop the subject. I'm sure this isn't over, but if it keeps going, it won't be because of me. This is far from my proudest moment and a small part of me regrets it, but I'm done with that guy. My pool is not a motel room. For background, I am a combat veteran and a school teacher at this time, and my wife was a school teacher as well. So I bought my first house 12 years ago. It was in a low middle class neighborhood with a lot of working class families. My house had a pool in the backyard and my parents bought me and my wife a hot tub as a wedding and housewarming gift. Two weeks after moving in, we found a stranger and six teenage kids swimming in our pool when we got home. We will call them Entitled Mom, Entitled Daughter, and Entitled Sons, and the others I assume to be their friends and or boyfriend. The Entitled Daughter was about 18 or 19 years old and her brother about 17. The Entitled Mom told me that the previous owner gave them permission to come over whenever they wanted to swim. I explained to her that I was the new owner and that I was not okay with it. I told the Entitled Mom that not only do I not know them, but there is a legal liability for me if they got hurt. She yelled and fake cried saying I was being a bad neighbor, selfish, and forcing her kids to sweat in the summer heat. She told me that if they died of heat stroke, it was my fault for not letting them swim in my pool. I told her to get the F off my property and never return. Fast forward two weeks. I had put up a no trespassing sign on my property in multiple spots and had gotten to know many of the not entitled neighbors. They were gray and told me to ignore the entitled mom and her kids. They told us she was already badmouthing us, but no one ever believed her. Now I start to notice when I wake up in the morning that there is evidence of people using my pool and hot tub at night when we are asleep or away. I find beer cans, cigarette butts, and even a used condom. I figure it has to be Entitled Mom and or her brats, so I install cameras on the grounds and start videotaping. Sure enough, I catch Entitled Daughter and a few others hanging out in my pool Friday nights when my wife and I are out. Friday nights, she goes to a friend's house for movies and wine, and I play Warhammer 40k or card games. I figure they must have been waiting for us to leave and then threw a mini party or were quietly swimming while we slept. So I discussed it with my wife and decided to teach Entitled Mom and her brats a lesson. So the next Friday night I park my car street over and my wife does the same. We wait in the dark house to see if any of them come over. Entitled Daughter and I assume her boyfriend, Entitled Son and I assume his girlfriend, and four other teen couples come right over and start skinny dipping in my pool and hot tub. Why a bro and sis would do that together still bothers me. They have beer and I can smell the weed from inside my house. I wait 45 minutes for them to get really into their fun, and two are actually having sex in my pool. Then I spring my trap. I go out with my rifle. Ruger Mini 14 with 20 round magazine, for you gun enthusiasts like me. Pointed at the ground, but at the ready. When I reach the pool, my wife flips on the back lights, and I yell for them to freeze or I'll shoot. My wife calls the police, meanwhile. They all have the deer in the headlights look on their faces, and not one of them tries to speak for a good minute. The entitled daughter starts telling us that she has permission to be there, and that we need to let them get dressed. I tell them that if they move towards me or their property, that I would consider them to be charging me or reaching for a weapon and I'd shoot. They must have believed me because they froze. 
One girl begged me to give her her clothes while she was trying to cover her breasts with her hands. Not being a total jerk, I say that I will throw them all their clothing. I then walk over to their piles of clothing, phones, and purses, and throw everything in the pool. They freak out trying to save their phones and other goods. After 10 minutes, the police show up, and they have the kids climb out of the pool wearing their soaked clothes and trying to shake their phones dry. I show the police the videos from our cameras, the no trespassing signs, and explain to them that I had told them and their mother they were persona non grata. The kids were arrested for trespassing, possession of a controlled substance, underage drinking, and indecent exposure. The police recommended that next time I leave the gun in the safe and let them just come and get them. I told them that I thought they may attack my wife and had to stand my ground. I proved that I never pointed it at them with the videos, so I couldn't be charged with anything. As the kids are being loaded into the police cruisers, Entitled Mom shows up, yelling at the police and my wife and I, and even tries to open the door on one of the cruisers. The police threaten her with being arrested if she doesn't back off and leave my wife and I alone. I later found out that the charges against the teens were reduced, and they all got plea deals. They all got community service, fines, and were put on probation. We got a restraining order against Entitled Mom and her brats, so they couldn't bother us again. I sent a bill to Entitled Mom for the cost of draining, disinfecting, and refilling my pool, and having a professional cleaning service clean up the kids' mess. The bill was for about $400. I had my parents' attorney send it to Entitled Mom with a letter, stating that if it was not paid in 30 days, then we would sue her for a larger amount. She paid sent a check to my attorney and thankfully it did not bounce. About a year later, the entire family moved away and we never heard from them again. Entitled parent wants to clear a kid's park to do a photo shoot. This happened this morning. I took my son to a farm park, and after you've been through all the animals, there's a play area with a climbing frame, slides, swings, etc. It's pretty busy today, about 30 kids or so playing on the frame and slide. Enter Entitled Parent with a baby less than six months old. She's got her arms full of fancy scarves, artificial flowers, and a proper camera. The Entitled Parent keeps trying to put her baby at the bottom of the slide, and is getting more and more annoyed that kids keep coming down it. So she approaches us parents, stood off to the side doing small talk. Doesn't even ask, just states, I need all your kids to stop playing for a bit so I can get these photos on the slide. Obviously gets told no, it's a play area, not a photo shoot. So the entitled parent storms away from us, and instead starts shouting at the kids who come to the top of the slide, actually calls my son rude and inconsiderate for asking if he can come down the slide please. She takes one of her scarves and starts trying to tie it across the slide to stop kids coming down. She's getting angrier and angrier and eventually shouts, Get your f***ing kids out of the way, this is my photo shoot. One of the other parents went to find the park manager, me and one of the dads try to calmly talk to the entitled parent, explain our kids are playing and it's not fair to try and stop them for her. There's plenty of other beautiful spots in the farm park where she can go for photos. Eventually the manager shows up, tells this woman that she's creating a health and safety hazard, and asks her to leave the farm completely. We could hear her shouting and swearing all the way to the car park. She's suing for discrimination apparently. And that's going to be all for today guys, thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. So take care and I'll see you next time.